Now what is the main advantage of using the addressing mode is so why don't we provide the uh, directly whatever is present in a you know like this so what I mean to say is why don't you directly provide the operand in the instruction for example why don't you say add to add add to so in an accumulator kind of organization what does this add to mean we have the accumulator and into this accumulator we are going to say ac plus 2 right so why don't we directly provide the operand because we cannot provide that because we might not know what this operand could be till we uh, come to that point in the execution for example we are we want to work something we are working on something a, a program where we are going to get a number here and depending on this number we are going to you know, proceed further then in that case we are sub we are definitely going to work with the variables not with the operands therefore therefore in all the cases we cannot provide the value of the operand directly and so we might have to use the variables now these variables where can they be present either they can be present in the memory or in the register right so if they are directly present in the memory then we might have to provide the address of the memory sometimes the address of the memory can be very big right but if they are present in the register the register number will be small therefore you know the having them at different places is going to change the size of the instruction see this to reduce the number of bits in the addressing field of the instruction for example if you have a memory which is one kilobyte 1k by 16 this is the memory you have so what does it mean it means that we have nearly 1024 locations and the size of each word is 16 bits got it so what is the meaning of it we have 1024 locations and the size of each location is 16 bits and one address is given to every 16 bits which means the first 16 bits is going to get a number 0 the second 16 bits is going to get a number 1 and the last 16 bits is going to get a number 1023 now if you are if the required operand is present in the memory and if you are trying to give the memory address in the instruction then you are supposed to give the address which contains 10 bits therefore if you are trying to give any number in this we are supposed to put 10 bits in the instruction right let us say the operand is being computed in the cpu and if it is stored in a register and assume that we have 16 registers then in order to identify one of the register we need just four bits isn't it if we have 16 registers in order to number them or identify one of them we just need four bits right so using four bits we can go from all zeros to all ones right which means 0 to 15 isn't it therefore when you are going from 0 to 15 you know to identify the registers the number of bits which are required in the instruction is falling down to 4 from 10 therefore one advantage of using the addressing mode is the number of bits in the addressing field of the instruction will get reduced here clearly it is from 10 it has reduced down to 4 got it but then it might not always be possible but wherever possible having this flexibility is better if a program might look small right and what about the other advantage to give programmers facilities such as pointers so what is pointer we don't directly give the memory address we give some address and once we go to that address we find the actual address where the operand is present that we call it as the effective address so we i'll just use introduce a term called as effective address here so effective address is where the actual address is present or where the actual operand is present try to remember this word effective address this term we are going to use it in this addressing mode what is the meaning of this effective address is this is the address where the actual operand is present the address given in the instruction might not always be the same address where the operand is present we might have to sometimes compute or do something with the address given in the instruction to get the address where the actual operand is present so 
the address where the actual operand is present we call it as effective address and we have to compute the effective address from the address which is given in the instruction got it so we call the address given in the instruction as normal address and using that when we are trying to compute the actual address in at which the operand is present and from which we have to fetch the operand we call it as the effective address therefore the entire purpose of addressing mode is to compute the effective address from the address given in the uh, instruction got it so see this now what is the advantage of having the addressing mode is to give programmers facilities such as pointers what is pointer is whenever the address is given in the instruction that is not the effective address we go to that particular address and in that particular address we find the effective address so what i mean to say is this one so assume that we are given add x and along with instruction it is said that we are we are not giving the address x it is indirect address or some kind of term is given now how to how to evaluate this one is in terms of pointers is this address x let us say this address x is 200 now we go to the address 200 then in this address a number 300 is present now we see this number 300 this number 300 is not the operand this is actually the address at which our required operand is present so this address this is the actual operand and this is the effective address because our operand is present at this address getting this so simple whatever address is given in the instruction let's call it as the address itself and using this address we might have to compute the effective address so in this case in this case it is not same it is not the same in all the cases in this case what i mean to say is your address in the instruction is giving us a different address and once i go to that address the operand is present there using this concept we can implement the pointers so that is one of the advantages of having the addressing mode in this case the effective address happens to be 300 got it so one thing is we can implement the pointers and the second thing is we can implement counters for the control loop so what do i mean by counters for the control loop is most of the programming languages have the construct of loops for example a for loop for i equal to 0 something i less than n i plus plus in this case what we want is we want a facility in which i will be incremented after every time we finish this uh, these statements got it so that can be implemented if you have something for incrementation and decrementation automatically for that we can again use the addressing modes and implement this so this facility is also given and next thing is indexing of data so we know what an indexing is for example if you have an array a right then we want a index pointer which will point to a low you know to data or an element in the array and why do we want to have it because we want to keep moving it to the right or to the left if that has to happen we should have a addressing mode by which we know that this particular thing is a index so if it is an index then how do we compute the let us say this is a and index is 0 and index this one is 1 this one is 2 this one is 3 this one is 4 if the index is given how do you compute the effective address you take the base which is a and then you add the index then you will get the address of the element got it again here also we had to do something in order to get the effective address effective address is not directly given got it so that can be done using addressing mode and again program relocation so we have seen in operating system what program relocation is if you are having memory and if you having a program in the memory we will not always load the program at the same point we want to move it from one point to the other point then what we need is whenever we move it the all the addresses inside the program they also should be moved appropriately for example if you have uh, this program is loaded in 100 and there is an address 150 and now there is a statement here saying that jump to the location 150 later when this program is entirely moved to some other address 300 to 350 right 
and if you still have that instruction jump to 150 here that will go to a different location so when you are moving the entire program all the addresses inside the program also have to be moved that is called as program relocation in the case of program relocation also we need the help of addressing addressing mode where we have to compute the effective address using some other addresses got it one address will be given in the instruction and one address will be stored somewhere and we have to do some operations on this in order to get the effective address got it so for that reason also we are going to use addressing modes now what we shall see is i'll introduce you to various names or the terms given to indicate each of these facilities and then we shall discuss about the problems in each of them okay Hi, if you are planning to do masters, then doing masters abroad is better than doing masters in India. I will give you all the reasons. So, first reason is, out of 1 lakh students who take GATE every year, there are only 500 seats in old IITs. So, all the IITs put together have an acceptance rate of 0.5%. And IITs, universities better than IITs, they have very good acceptance rate like 30%, 40%. But all the IITs put together have an acceptance rate of 0.5%. And if you are working hard to get into IIT Bombay, IIT Bombay's ranking is 177 and IIT Roorkee's ranking is 400. If you are happy to get into IIT Roorkee, then getting into universities better than IIT Roorkee is easier compared to getting into IIT Roorkee. And looking at the salaries for computer science, for software jobs, if you have done your master's in computer science in US, the salaries are ranging from 80 lakhs per year to 1.2 crore per year. So even if you take an average of 1 crore per year, your savings will be much higher than the salaries in India. After taxes and your cost of living, you can easily save 40 to 50 lakhs uh, per year. And in India, the maximum jobs that you get is around 30 lakhs. So your savings will be much greater than the salaries in India and these are all the services that we provide university shortlisting so depending on your profile we will shortlist what are the universities that you have to apply and statement of purpose building and then LOR guidance and GRE and English test assistance and education loan assistance so you don't have to have any collateral which, which means without any security now you can get education loan Getting education loan is very simple these days and whatever the amount fee, the amount of uh, fee that you have, you have a range of uh, universities. You can apply for 10 lakh universities, 20 lakh universities or 50 lakh universities. But whatever it is, you are going to get complete education loan and you can pay off your education loan in one year after you, getting it, after you get a job. And then we do visa assistance, mock visa interviews and then connecting with the university alumni. So now you might ask why we should join Game of Visas. So the answer is we have 90% success rate, 99% success rate. And these are all the destinations that we guide the students to. So we guide students to any country that you want to go. So now it is not just USA. We guide to UK, Germany, Australia, Canada. So we guide, we guide students to all the countries. We work with all the destinations. And if you are interested, in going abroad, you have to just drop us a message on this WhatsApp number 9494 555 454. Okay, thank you.